You want to start with these wide receivers right off the bat? Yeah, let's do it because yeah. we got player comps. And, yeah. you know, something we were talking about before the show was just player comps can go so many ways. Mm -hmm. It can be body typing, athleticism, play style. It can be range of outcomes. Like, there's going to be wide receiver comps I have on here where I'm like, this is his best version of him. I hear you. It doesn't right. mean, right. hey, walks into the NFL and you're A.J. Green today. Right. Like, that. that's why it's so hard when you just, you know, post the graphic. And yep. it's like, player comp. Right. There's so many varieties and routes to get to how a player I is compared. Agreed. It could be what he might be at one day, what he reminds yeah. you of right now, right? I, I, I'm a little bit more of when I do player comps of, like, more of I try to keep it in the lines, and I don't do it for every guy like you do. Yeah. But keep it along the lines of like his body and the way he moves reminds me of this guy. Which is probably right? the best, the closest way to That's do it. That's what I try to yeah. do. And then I try to think, okay, wait, oh, he reminds me of that guy. Wait, are there other guys that are like that that are maybe a better version of that or a lesser version of that? And that's kind of what I try to do. And at times, you know, you come away and you go, damn, this guy reminds me of somebody that I can't remember who yeah. it is or I can't it won't come to my brain and then you write something else down maybe you know just to, again and just a thought or what this guy could be or whatever but uh you're right it's it's an interesting discussion always and uh that's kind of how I usually approach it is what the guy reminds me of and then what I think he can be in the NFL exactly and uh yeah. we'll, we'll see where that combo goes here right I think it's the best way to paint a picture for the fans of like this is what you drafted this is what you hope you're yeah, getting yeah. and yep. we're going to look at the wide receivers right now and there's definitely some really rich comparisons I mean some of these are best possible outcomes so the top Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I see AJ Green the way he wins with his length the way he comes back to the ball I hear that I, I think the speed from 20 to 40 yeah. is better than the speed from 0 to 10 gotcha which is almost the opposite when you look at Malik Neighbors to DJ Moore, which when you look at their testing, their jumps, their explosiveness, it's almost identical. Well, yeah, they're freaks. Freaks. And right. that 0 to 10 is right. in a different universe exactly. of how you get them the ball in space or right. how you use them over the top. Right. So, I mean, AJ Green and DJ Moore, they're very rich comparisons, but I think it also speaks to how special this wide receiver class is. I, listen, I, 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 the Malik neighbors, DJ Moore, Jamar Chase, I've used Odell Beckham Jr. type of explosion when I've yeah. talked about him. You know, the ability to stick the foot in the ground and explode out of it it's it's special nonetheless and i think you're you're explaining that right with the with the dj moore stuff too people still don't realize how awesome dj moore is i think on a national capacity right, right? i think that people are slowly learning i even had a conversation about this the other day with a coach because they were hey the, you know these guys are kind of in a class of their own that's what they were talking about we were talking receivers and i went i think i'd put dj moore in that class too and they went yeah, I, you know, I don't ever. I haven't watched the Bears. I haven't really seen him the last. I haven't yeah. seen him the last. And I was like, well, I'll be here to tell you, he's of the class of Jamar Chase and those guys. Uh, so I'm with you there. The one, the Marvin Harrison Jr. one. That's the interesting one, and I think that's where the debate is a little bit with that, right? Yeah. Because I don't know if I see the same explosion of AJ Green. Right. Right. I certainly think he's a really good football player, and know he can do everything that way. The guy I kind of used a little bit in one of mine was like Michael Thomas, right? Yeah. I kind of looked at it in some ways and went, wait, I don't know if I think he's as explosive as A.J. Green, but I think he can play big slot and do some of that at a really high level and almost be a Michael Thomas Jr. type of guy, maybe with even a little more outside value than Michael Thomas Jr. had, right? But if he has A.J. Green type of explosion, that would make me think differently of him, and then he was definitely going to kick some ass in the NFL. You know what's funny with Green? Because yeah. I agree with you how yeah. explosive he was on tape. He was such an average tester, which is – I had to look back at this. This is – when you brought up Con Connor Barwin, this is the time of year where I go back to like players that right. played like 10, 15 yeah, yeah. years ago. Right. I mean, Green was a guy 34 and a half inch vertical, 36 percentile. I mean, the 10 yard split, 155, 50. Yeah. Like, he wasn't different. What was his top? What was his 40? 448. 448. Four, four, Damn. Yeah, it's, it's slower than I would have thought. But, like, I mean, he's somebody I got yeah. to see play in person yeah. when he was with Cincinnati, and it didn't look like that. It definitely did. I, he had incredible quick feet. That's the other thing about AJ Green for his length he had, arms were his insane. ability to be do this. And, Gosh, I would have thought it was faster than four four eight. So I would think four four. I like watched a lot inches. of days or a lot of games yeah. with him and Matthew Stafford down there in Georgia in those years, and uh, yeah, I'm actually shocked to hear it four four eight. Uh, but but yeah, that I, I I I hear you there. Marvin Harrison Jr. to me is to me going to be one of the wrinkles, j jokers, jack of all trades of the first ten picks, right? I mean, I do think. More of the league has neighbors as the number one receiver. I wouldn't be right? shocked. I, now, now Harrison 
we've discussed here a little bit. He's a safe, good pick. The floor is high. The ceiling's pretty high, too, right? I don't think it's as high as neighbors or maybe even a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. in yeah. my eye. But either way, like, he is definitely a safe pick. So where does he go, right? That's to me, like, when I think about Marvin Harrison Jr. and I think forward to the Cardinals, I go, I could see that. Monty Austin Ford, the GM there, came from New England. They might be into just, hey, we just want to get a safe, make sure this pick works type of thing, right? right? Or are they going to go with a neighbors who I think is more physically gifted and all that, but maybe not as safe? Uh, that, that's going to be interesting to me. I'm going to be interested to see how this Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik Neighbors thing shakes out. And then what happens to them if, if four and five want to trade out? And then you're looking at it and you're going, well, with the Giants, if they get jumped for all the quarterbacks, they have to take one of them. Right. But then Tennessee, how do they value the top tackle versus the top receiver? Are you a believer why we're sitting there on that comment there? Do you think that the Giants are going to be in the the quarterback combo here? I think in the right situation. Yeah. I think that they would, if New England does not want to take one, then the Giants are a great trade partner because you're only moving back to six. Yeah, right. That's what makes them so attractive. Right. The Giants have to look at it like this, right, where – are they going to be bad again this year, no matter what, in a quarterback class that I believe next year will be thinner than this one, where, like, do you have to get the guy now? Because Dable and Shane, I think their job security is fine, but it's the NFL. You're always thinking about the long term. I think they would be willing to move into three for somebody maybe physically gifted like Drake May. I don't know what I make of the McCarthy rumors to them. That's really interesting to me. I've always liked Michael Penix for them, but I, I had heard that I think a lot of teams like the Giants love the idea of Penix at the top of round two, mm. and then they realize those days are gone. Yeah, that's not happening. Those, that's not happening. Right. Like, there's a reason why Penix is taking private you know, workouts with the Vikings and teams the like Raiders, that, because he's going right. in the first round. Sure, right. So, which he should. Which he sh- absolutely yeah, should. I'm right. with you on that. He's yeah. my QB3. Yeah. So, th- that's yeah, I think it's real, but I think the Giants will also be – a little careful where like you look at 11 through 13 Vikings Broncos Raiders I think they they sell they would sell their franchises to come up for one I don't yeah. think the Giants would do that I I, I hope not I, I don't me, think they should by the way yeah I, I mean the the quarterback conversation to me with the Giants uh, that, that that I just I don't get it I don't get it I'm just gonna say that right off the bat I don't and I think that you know Brian Dayball and and you know um no I was gonna say Brandon Bean Joe Shane are they're playing with fire, in my opinion, if they go that route. They really are. I mean, again, the Giants, no, we're expecting a step forward, right? It shouldn't look like last year. It definitely shouldn't, okay? Uh, I, they got a, they've had a number of problems with the roster like we've talked about, and Daniel Jones is way down the list for the problems, in my opinion. So they're going to do that here and where you say, yeah, they're not in a hot seat year. I get that. But – Wait, we're going to draft a quarterback, and now we're going to have Drew Locke and Daniel Jones, and we're going to have the New York media talking about the quarterback in the locker room every day. And then, okay, now you're in danger of uh, you might go 5-12 and now because now you're a distraction. Who knows what the hell is going to happen with the football team? And now your ass is going to be on the hot seat. So that's where I just don't understand that thought altogether, right? Uh, and we'll, we'll hit on more of that here in a minute I, because I, we, we want to talk about Drake May and stuff like that, but I don't want to go down the wrong wormhole here because we're still talking receivers here. But it is interesting, just to put a little bow on it, I thought when they had pick 39 that they traded to the Panthers, yeah. the best route for the Giants, and this was two months ago, was receiver at six, mm-hmm. preferably neighbors for them because they have, don't have that guy. Right. And then – come up from 39 because you also have 47 back into round one and right. get the tier two quarterbacks yeah. which is the Penix and Knicks kind of range right. and I thought McCarthy was there at the time right. too he's not anymore right. and those days are just gone yeah the quarterback like thirst is insane I wonder about Bo Nix maybe that still might be available for that conversation even though I'm starting to feel that 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 at least I don't think it should be and I'm starting to feel that it won't be but we'll, we'll see that that seems to be the last name available the big group yes. that might be available for that late first round early second round trade up now we get our guy and go from there um but all right let's go let's keep hitting on your receivers here. so number three Roma Dunze this yeah. is the one full transparency I struggled with the most yeah. not even close like the other ones I at least see something where I'm like definitely right with Roma Dunze he is so hard to compare to somebody because he's just a different kind of receiver I think you got it right you here, like though. this, this one? So I used the the one this is one I used so I blended the, it the I, first one yeah Keenan yeah. Allen the timing the footwork yes. understanding the, you know the back shoulder ball exactly playing the bigger exactly exactly yes. the, the blend that I throw Hushman Zada in there is I think Rome is physical he's got 
gotten more physical. I think right. he's somebody that understands how to catch the ball in close quarters sure. and foam boots and congested spaces. Right. So that that was a very very difficult one to nail down. Yeah, I you know, but I like your Keenan Allen one. That was one of the first names that came to my mind when I watched Rome, uh, even early in the college football season. You know, I went, oh, he's kind of a Keenan Allen, Devontae Adams type ish type of player. It's not going to be, oh wow, watch him fly by this guy. Oh my gosh, this is the most explosive thing in the world. There's plenty of that in that department, but it's not the wowing elite part of his game. It's the other stuff. He's a natural in playing the football game. He's a natural at the position, and then you couple that with the size and the ability to route run uh, run routes. He's he's perfect for an NFL offense. Uh, you know th- that that's the big thing. But that's where I am a little lower on like him and Harrison Jr. because you know me, I'm into more of the the DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors type yeah. of thing. Run by people, right? Run by people. I'm or your you. next comp of Christian Watson, Brian Thomas right. Jr. Perfect example. Right? Those are my kind of guys that I I prefer more at the top of the draft rather than again the other guys are really good and I just want to make sure I'm clear about this. But yeah, it's not about just pure physical prowess with those guys. It is a little bit about hey precise route running, playing the game, doing that, and I just value you know that other guy a little more. So the next one with Brian Thomas Jr. The yeah. reality in this world is there's not a lot of people that are six three, two hundred ten right. pounds and right. run four three. Exactly right. There's just not. Exactly right. And I'll, I'll say some of the things they need polish on, it's similar with Watson coming out of an FCS program. Mm-hmm. Right. Where, listen, Brian Thomas Jr. does not run an advanced route tree. I don't care because the routes he runs, he's excellent at. Yeah. The hang time, the acrobatic nature, it's simply just that, Chris, once again, these guys, there's not a lot of people that are built like this that move like this. That's, that's why I'm in love with them. Yeah. I am. You know, it, it's a little more raw. You're right. But I, again, the limited route tree, I always go back to like DK AJ Metcalf. Brown and DK Metcalf in those years to go, yeah, there's only three routes, but they run those three routes really damn good. And then I see what they do with the ball in their hand and their ability to stick their foot in the ground and make sharp cuts that way. Hmm, let me put that together. Oh, when he has to run that route, he'll be able to stick his foot in the ground and do that. So we'll see. Right. We'll see. I think these are clearly the four best guys in the draft at wide receiver. Easily. In fact, I think these are the only four first rounders, really, in my opinion. Yep. Right. Uh, I think there is a drop off. The rest of these guys that we'll talk about here in a second are good. No doubt about it. But I don't think it's first round talent. Brian Thomas Jr. is the guy that I'm going to be interested to see where he goes, where that ends up. Right. I think, you know, I've gotten some feedback there. Right. I think on some teams he's high. He's higher up there. Right, I have been told there is some off the field stuff a little with Brian Thomas Jr. Right, I don't know how bad it is. I don't know what the extent it is. I don't dig into that stuff too much. I kind of just go with what my friends I text with. Like, yeah, his off the field stuff's not squeaky clean. Whatever. It helps you forecast. Right. So, right. right. It just helps you forecast and think about now with the draft coming, like where this might happen, how it might play out. I clearly value, value him as my number two receiver as far as pure physical talent on the on the football field. I really love him, um, but. Yeah, I think there is a, a big drop off. And with him, you get the feel. My point was is that those other three guys, your top three guys, I, I would expect they're gonna be off the board by fourteen at the very least, or you know, probably before that, really. The top three won't make it out of ten. I probably not. They so won't. there you get to that, and then you go, Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now we're with one guy left that is clearly gonna have a first round grade on everybody's board. Right? Where does he go? Who's going to be aggressive? Is somebody going to go, damn, there's only one difference making receiver left. We got to make a move. Like, you know, people think the Buffalo Bills might, right? Or somebody like that. Where does that go? I, I think to me, he is one of the interesting people to, to kind of feel or see or talk about where he ends up. I have the four of them in my top 11. Yeah. The next guy isn't until 28. Right. And that's Troy Franklin. That's Troy Franklin. So yeah. that's a big that's, that's a, a big, big drop. difference. Now I'll say this. Yeah. No matter what I think of him, what you think of him, and I have Adonai Mitchell at 42, he's going earlier than people think. He's going in the first round. Who's Ad- that? Adonai Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell from Texas mm, because yeah. of the traits. Because And we can have that conversation when we get to him, the shortcomings as well. But he's going very early. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, it seems that way, right? Yeah. Um, to me, I look at him as more of a top of the second round type of guy. That's right where I have him. Right. That's how I would have. But yeah, would I be shocked to see him go at 28 or something like that? Certainly. But I think you and I talked at the time. I don't know if we talked on air. But yeah, his film is, is, is makes you want more. Too much cruise control. It's too much cruise control. Definitely not enough intensity, you know, urgency running routes. Wait for the talent we're talking about. A guy that it's, there's just not enough after the catch that bothers me. Goes down too easy. 
right? There's just some of that. But, you know, it, it does seem like uh, the NFL likes him. You hear that name, there's just too much smoke. There's got to be fire there. So five, Troy Franklin, another tough one. I went with Will Fuller. I know he didn't time like Will Fuller, yeah. but that slender build. The first step is the where they're the same. Yeah, yeah. Like Franklin's first step makes it really hard to disrupt his release package. Right, right. And then he's gone. Yep. And they both have some shortcomings. They're both really skinny. Mm-hmm. They drop some layups that drive you insane. Yeah. Like there are quite like why aren't you bigger? Yeah. Right. right. So th- that's an interesting one to me. Franklin is the classic. If he goes to Buffalo, if he goes to the Chiefs, I think like you're like, wow, he's gonna explode. Yeah. If no. he goes to the wrong place, right. Like Carolina right. in the second round. Yeah. You're like, ah, eh, this is not gonna be so yeah. great. I like Franklin. He definitely has some things, you know, that I think I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how it'll translate totally in the NFL, right? I, I guess or how good he'll possibly be. Right. Liked his game, you know, but you know, even like what you talked about, the great the quick feet at the line of scrimmage and all that, you know, the route running is a little underwhelming with him at times where I'm always like, damn, that's a lot of steps there. Damn, right. there's a lot of pitter patter to come out of that break, yeah. right? That was definitely some of the things I I looked at a little bit. He's a hard guy to for, he was a hard guy for me to get a feel for how much I really liked him, right? He was in the running for my top five receiver conversation. I uh, picked Roman Wilson as five for me, um, but but certainly like this guy. This whole group is good, as we've talked about. It's really good, and that brings me to Jalen Polk at six. I mean, Chris Godwin, obviously, the, the highest range of outcome for Polk, yeah. but the concentration, the ability to go over the middle of the field, what, what sh- like not shocking with Polk, but what tells you about his DNA is I think he's the best run blocking receiver in the draft. Mm. I mean, they will motion him behind the line of scrimmage and he'll go through the A gap and take on linebackers. Yeah, right, right. It's like it, there's a different energy to this kid that will work at the NFL. There's just something about him where he's fearless. I, once again, that concentration is unbelievable. Some of the yeah. tipped passes that he yeah. was able to catch, and he tested a little better than I thought, so which right. gave you, me a little comfort. Were, yeah, I hear you there. That that was what I worried about, right? I mean, he his, I still worry about that, just the top-end explosion there, right? I could see where you go with the Chris Godwin. You're talking about that physicality part of it yes. there, right? Pound right. for pound yeah. strength. I think Godwin was a little more physically gifted, Definitely. right? But I hear you there. And Polka's... Almost like we talked about with Odunze, he, he can play. He just knows how to play. He's got a great ability to you know, adjust to the football. I, I'm with you there. You're probably a little higher on him than I am. Uh, I do like him a lot, but I don't like him as much as like Rick, like Ricky Pearsall, who you're about to talk Man. to in a second here. Ricky Pearsall, and this is, this is probably a comp that will, you know, some eyes will open, calling him Greg Jennings. But there, when you look at the three cone, you look at the short area quickness and how they can slither through defenders Mm -hmm. in that first 10 yards, that's where I see him exactly like Greg Jennings. Like, I'm going to get open on a five-step drop, three-step drop, and throw me the ball. Yeah. like just um, right. And he right. catches everything. 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 I, I'm One a big fan of adju- He's big awesome. Fan. Yeah. He's awesome. He's in my top 40. I think in any other receiver class, he'd be talked about as a first-round pick. Yeah, he's, he's close for sure. I mean, his size, the route running, right? The explosion is real. I mean, it's not, again, of the top guys, but it, it's good enough. You see it against big time competition, right? I, I, I got a feel of like Adam Thielen. He was the name I kept using. Yeah, he reminded for me sure. of the way he ran. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Pearsall. A fan of Pearsall in a big way. And the fact where I feel like, honestly, Connor, in my world, I like him better than Polk and Troy, uh, Troy Franklin. Uh, I really do. I think he's safer. So, so yeah, we'll yeah. see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. He, he, guys like Ricky Pearsall are made for the NFL because it's just like there's he's got enough size and explosion to win on the outside. But like a hey, like a, the Edelmans or the Cooper Cups of the world, he's got enough phys- he's got enough route running and smarts, and then that couple that with the physical explosion, man, I think he's made to be that ninety catch a year type for of sure. guy in the NFL. You could play him inside and outside, right, and you right. don't think twice about it right. lad mcconkey i haven't talked to you about yeah him. what do you think of lad McConkie? i like lad i'm not in love with lad i think it went too far i think so Finally. too. i think he's a little bit of a made up i mean a little bit of a made up receiver made up of a specimen to a degree okay yeah. i don't know if i feel like he's as naturally gifted as some of these other guys here uh i do like him don't get me wrong he's another guy he's made for the nfl in a lot of ways but he's like a a smaller lesser version of ricky pearsall and i in thought my, the same my, thing that's why i had him behind opinion. him right people are right. always shocked when they see that i had him behind pearsall all, but I'm like, there's a size difference. Now, Lad is really athletic. He did play outside as well as inside. Yeah. 
but you have to project to the NFL, and that's where that size starts to matter. And I think the, I think the frame was different for them too. Definitely, I saw a different body type, not height wise or length wise necessarily, although. McConkie's got very short arms and small hands, but uh, the Pearsall plays the a frame. much bigger game and, right. the, and is made for I the mean, NFL and the bumping and grinding of route running. And, yeah, he gets and the getting, shit knocked out of him, and it's like he just pops up he's like that. Yeah, whatever, fearless. It's crazy. Yes, he's fearless. But I, really I do, crazy. I do like Lad McConkie. I do, and I think he's a d- little different version of like true jitterbug, right? Work the middle of the field, be that guy, and then you know every now and then he does have enough speed where he could take the shot down the field. Um, now your number ten guy, that's another guy I was I was up there on, uh, Keon Coleman. The highs are the sugar high of all sugar high. I, I'm, I'm I'm interested to see where he goes. I get a feel that I get a feel from the draft community or the NFL community that he is. He is viewed as someone that goes somewhere between like 32 and 50, that's somewhere a, in that that's range. That's what I right? would say, too. You know, I wasn't sure if he would be viewed that way, and I feel like I'm even being probably a little um, uh, wide range with 50 because I feel like I've gotten a lot of feedback of like top of the second round more than not when I, when I hear that name or we talk about that name. But another guy where it might not be wowing, the highlights not be like, oh, my gosh, they're the most amazing things you've ever seen, but it's still really damn good. And I think it's a style and a physical size that fits the NFL to where I look like it's just – I feel like it's day one he'll be ready to go. Right, and that's what you hope for. I think he struggles to separate, but he doesn't always have to be open. No. That's what matters the most. Exactly. They really threw him screens and jump balls. You watch the offense. I mean, he only had two games of 100-plus yards. Right. So it's like, hey, we're throwing you a screen. I think he returned – Punts are he definitely was a returner for them in some capacity, which is bizarre for a receiver built like him. Um, usually, you just don't see those big X receivers returning back there. He, he can stick his foot in the ground and make people miss as good as anybody in the draft. Let alone that with the route running. That's where again he's another guy I look at almost like what we talked about with Marvin Harrison Jr. A little where I go, this guy to me is a big slot. He is Anquan Bolden Jr. ish. In my in the way he moves, in my opinion, you know, and it's it's oddly enough they both come from Florida State, but it's yeah, it's not the blazing straight ahead speed, it's the strength, it's the physicality, and it's the ability to run really intricate, sharp routes at a high level. I I really like Keon Coleman. Was on Michigan State's basketball team. That's insane. I, I mean, is that not insane? Yeah, right, insane. Like Michigan State's right. basketball team. Right. Right, and I now he's you. made well, the full you see switch some of that football. when he jumps up and gets those balls. I mean, he's, he's it's, dunking on people. It's some of the best plays in Definitely. this wide receiver class. Definitely. I guess we'll put a ball on this with, with uh, Adonai Mitchell. Yeah, I mean, just for me, the highs are once again. I mean, he can make great plays in the air. He's somebody that you love the movement, the explosiveness at times, the intensity, and overall aggression drove me completely yeah, it's insane. Crazy, like complete. I, I watched him more than any receiver in this draft right. because. Every time I ranked him, it was the most feedback where people were like, and this is everyone, agents, scouts, fans, like, he's going earlier than you think, he's a number one receiver, all these things. I just, this is such a weird nitpicky thing. I cannot stomach a guy that big how many times he lets a corner or a safety run by him in the run game. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying he missed the block. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, like, ran by him where right. I'm like, dude, the intensity of the NFL, it's going to be <laughs> tough, man. Like, it's... It's it's not just about catching a fade route in the back of the end zone. No. And I know it's such a nitpicky thing, and it'll drive people crazy when I say that, but it's just a DNA thing where you, you can't cruise through 35% of the game. That's where I, I – I, where I'll push back with you is I don't think he'll go in the first round. I think when push comes to shove, he ends up going to the second because round of what, because of the things you're the, talking about. Right. Everyone's going to go, I like everything about it, but I'm not sure I want to go first round in with this guy. So we'll see. But, yeah, he's definitely one of those guys. And you, like me, are a little lower on the Texas guys than most, most yeah, out I've there. Yeah, I have Worthy at 11. Right? Because, yeah, uh, Worthy to me is I, I wouldn't touch Worthy in the first round. It's the play strength. But, again, yeah, yeah. well, it, you know, he's tough. I will give him that. Right. Right? I, you know, he is fast as hell. Right? I don't think he is off the line of scrimmage. If you just watched that and didn't know his 40 time, I don't think you would watch the game and go, oh, 
yeah, this guy looks like he's a one four nine ten and runs four two two, right? He doesn't play that fast, in my opinion. Now he opens up and you see him go and you go, Well, he's really fast. Don't get me wrong, right? But I didn't feel like I was turning this on and just going, Oh my gosh, right? I felt like I was doing more of that with Jamar Chase a few years ago, going, Holy crap. Me too. He just exploded by this guy at the line of scrimmage. He's gone. It's see you later, right? And there's not as much of that in the Xavier worthy game as I guess I was expecting expecting let alone like a a donna mitchell there's too many plays where i go where explode off the ball where's the urgency why is this happening in that offense smooth like oh we're gonna build up speed all the time there's a little too much of that so he's another one i'm interested i think a lot of people i see him again chiefs at 32 and the end of the first round i'm gonna say he's another one that ends up not going in the first round and ends up somewhere early in the second uh I just feel like that between some of the things we're talking about and we see, and then I think the way some of these linemen are valued in this draft and that there's a big drop-off once you get out of the main core grooves there, that people are going to go, ah, we can still get a good receiver in the second. We can, there's only one more D tackle left on the board. There's only one more good pass rusher. There's only one more good guard, and it falls off a cliff. And I feel like that's what's going to end up happening to push these guys out of the first round maybe. I'm with you. I think yeah. about 33 to, we'll say, 51 because that starts with the Panthers and ends with the Steelers. Yeah. The amount of receivers in that range that mm. come off the board. Mm. There might be like eight receivers. I wouldn't taken be shocked. In I wouldn't that be range. shocked. Yeah. I so hear that. I think I agree with you, Chris. Yeah. I think teams will look at it that way as well. Uh, if you want to see my I ranked 30 receivers in this draft. It's all on NBCSports.com. Came up with player comps for about 18 of them. Yeah, 17 cool. of them. NBCSports.com so. yep. slash Connor Rogers. That's right. Connor Dash Rogers. That's right. Yo, yo, homies, what's up? I know it's the off season, but it's never the off season on Chris Sims Unbutton. Me and Ahmed Farid are gonna be here for it all. You know, we got free agency. We're gonna break it all down. The draft, the rankings of positions. Of course, we're gonna unpack it all. Hit subscribe, get to my free agency reactions, 2024 draft rankings, and more. Thanks again for watching. Peace out, homies. See you soon.